5 in the Lake Molly Pro Sport Bike Championship saw yet another first-time winner. John Lang from Cochrane, Alberta outlasted the field on a very wet racetrack at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Points leader David McKay crashed out. So too did Matthew Simpson, who is currently second in the championship. The grid is set, the track is dry, race number six is next. everyone and welcome to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for round four and race six of the Liqui Moly Pro Sport Bike Championship. Two-time former Superbike champion Francis Martin is here and will race on a Suzuki GSX-R600. We'll talk more about that as we get into the race but for now Colin here is the starting grid. Looking at qualifying and Sebastian Tremblay was an amazing 1.2 seconds faster than McKay, but I do not think it was representative given that rain was coming. Sue's on the front row of the grid along with Playford, so a good variety of machines in the front. And we got to mention Francis Martin back after just a 12 year break. Wow. And the last time he was on the podium in sport bike was here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And there's a look at now at the uh uh, Bickle Racing Twins class. Tommy Kaz is debuting the Yamaha this weekend, and Jeff Williams on the Aprilia. Uh, two of our riders in that class are injured, though, Colin. Right, Andrew Van Winkle with a concussion. Williams fell on Friday, so uh, it's a bizarre situation where we have the Yamaha making its debut here at the 10-turn CTMP, and to hands of Kazas, who has lots of success on this track that's very well established in the series, is the favorite of many of our competitors and leads to some fantastic slipstreaming on the back straight. For now, let's go down to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah said she has more information on Francis Martin. Thanks, guys. Race 6 of the Liquid Pro Superbike Championship will see the return of a two-time Superbike champion, Francis Martin. Martin will be riding the Suzuki GSXR 600, which was built by former crew chief Patrice Gaillet. Gaillet actually built this bike originally for fellow competitor Alex Dumas for the Loudoun Classic in New Hampshire. Dumas ultimately did not race, and Gaillet reached out to Martin to use the bike for this one. Martin will be starting in 8 today, so please keep an eye out for him. Back to you guys. Okay, we are getting set for this national championship. Oh no, oh no, Tatis is so Trombley. Trombley is out of it, the shaker. Oh, this is disaster, Colin. I thought we were missing someone from the grid and it was our pole sitter. That's Trombley, the pre-race favorite and we're underway without Trombley. Lights are out and here we go. Down into the first corner, it is David McKay who takes the immediate lead and I believe that is uh, Elliot Vieira who is tucked in right in behind him. And I think that's Souza on the Suzuki uh, defending GSXR honors in third. And after that great qualifying performance, good to see him up front. Uh, crazy pace here for McKay. He's trying to break away. Well, it usually doesn't happen at most for it. We see it very, very rarely. And I would suggest to you, Colin, that there's a bunch of guys in behind him there that don't want to see that happen. Before the incident with Tremblay, I wanted to mention that Martin expected to move up quickly, and he just got by play for, for fifth. Wow. So really strong pace. Another GSXR, even with Tremblay on the favorite GSXR out. Two GSXRs at the front. And let's watch Francis Martin, because he is a man on a mission just 12 years after his last national. Wow, we're at the camera right at Moss's corner now watching them go by as they'll make their way now up the Mario Andretti straightaway. It's horsepower time, Colin, and we'll see who's got the horsepower. We're on board with David McKay right now, and that is Elliot Vieira on the Ducati coming up alongside, and it looks like he's made the pass. Yeah, good move there by Vieira on the Ducati V-Twin, but McKay oh. comes steaming up the inside. Nice move, and he has not given up this lap sled opportunity. Nor is Vieira giving up. Vieira, I thought he was going to attempt to pass on the outside of nine, but that didn't happen. Fortunately, now they're in to corner number 10 and onto the front straight away. Fantastic back facing image here of Vieira oh. on the Ducati. Full tilt boogie chasing McKay for the lead and Simpson has Simpson. climbed his yeah. way up to third, has got by Souza. So lots of action at the front. We're also watching Martin who isn't far back. Playford on his tail. Very good group of riders up front and the pace is already faster than qualifying. Martin just got a big grunt coming out of turn number one. He had a great acceleration now as they chase after Vieira has moved into the lead. 
Heading into turn three, McKay swinging out a little wide, having a look. Now, we haven't mentioned much about the points, but the battle for the championship is between McKay and Simpson, and they're up to second and third. Now we go to the replay, and this is what we used to call, still call, the Jordan Zoak line. You just power out a one, you go up the inside of two. Vieira got it done nice and early, got the drive. That's what the Ducati should be strong at, is picking up the throttle and exiting the turns, but McKay has shown that that fast company built Kawasaki has plenty of top end speed. Plenty of top end speed is also what Vieira's got in hand here as he heads up the uh, Maria Andretti straightaway. McKay running in second spot now. Matt Simpson holding on to third spot. But let's check in with our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah said. She has more information for us on Sebastian Tremblay. Yeah, thanks guys. Pole sitter Sebastian Tremblay aboard his Turcot Performance Suzuki GSX-R600 just walked his way back to the pits and he was visibly frustrated. I did manage to get a quick word from him and he said it appears as though the battery in his bike has died. Of course, Tremblay was expected to compete for the win here at CTMP and he's not sure how it happened, but he did say he was confident that he would be able to get it fixed for the next race. Back to you guys. Well, that's a heartbreak for a lot of fans. Sebastian Tromley is a very, very popular rider. But meanwhile, we look at our race leader, Elliot Vieira, as he is uh, really stretching out that lead. We're on board right now with Matt Simpson on the number 91 bike. He is running second in the uh, points uh, standings for the championship and uh, anxious to finish this race, of course. Ducati rider Elliot Vieira continues to lead. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on GSM. Portions of the Liquamali Pro Sport Bike Championship are brought to you by Joe Rocket, Economy Lube and Tire, and Saran Canada. Close captioning of the Liquamali Pro Sport Bike Championship is brought to you by Goderich Toyota, EBC Brakes and Clutches, Apex Cycle and MotorcycleCourse.com. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We are working lap four of this national championship race. We're watching David McKay lead a pack of riders, but the leader of this race, Colin, is gone. Vieira has set a blinding pace. We saw him do this last year when he was Yamaha mounted. Now behind him, McKay, who is leading the points, is holding off a, what appears to be a motorcycle show. Kawasaki from Suzuki, Yamaha, Ducati, just an incredible variety, very little to choose between these guys and they're all lapping within a couple of tenths of each other. Terrific draft and here's where we see how the horsepower plays up at the back straight. We're on board right now with David McKay. We're looking back and guess who's coming to dinner? It is the number 23 of Francis Martin and Colin, he just blew by him. So far at Old Mosport, we have not seen anybody, superbike or sport bike, go by on the back straight that early. And that clearly is that new GSXR built by Patrice Goyet and piloted by veteran Francis Martin. Look at this in slow motion. He gets out of the draft early, very little drama. And look at the speed he's wow. carrying as he makes the move for. I want to point out that McKay pretty much held Vieira off in the draft. So maybe the fastest bike out here right now is Francis Martin on that brand new Suzuki. And we had a chance to talk to Francis Martin about his return to CSVK. It's tough. It's tougher than I thought uh, to, to come back uh, 12 years, well, 12 years after I quit racing. But um, no, the lap time is not there at all. And, uh, but every time I go out, it's a little bit better. I ride a little bit with Moto Nation two, three years ago uh, to give some school, but uh, to give school and go fast like that, it's very different. So uh, that didn't help me at all, I think, for, the, for this weekend. The thing helped me a lot. I do a lot of uh, mountain biking, so uh, for, the, for the cardio and the muscle, I'm, I'm good. It's not, it's not a problem there. It's only my head just to go to uh, get up to speed, and uh, I will, that will come, I, I think. And right now we're watching McKay. He has scratched his way over the first part of the lap onto the tail of Martin as we head up the back straight. Let's see what happens in the slipstream. Can McKay hang in? And the answer is no, he cannot. That Suzuki is a bullet. And right behind McKay is Simpson. And remember, that's the points yeah. battle. Simpson desperately needs to get in front. We're on board with Simpson. There is his arch rival. The favorite from the preseason is McKay on that Kawasaki. And he's watching Francis Martin. He's watching the history of Canadian in superbike racing, some of the kings of 600 racing, Steve Crevier, Jordan Zoke, they've all raced against Francis Martin. 
Well, it's a good spot for uh, Simpson to pick up some. Uh, he's going to school. Let's 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 say Playford trying a, a move there now. Playford holding on to fifth spot. Uh, had a look on Simpson. And he's having another look as they come out of turn one. I don't know if he's got. Yes, he is. He's closing on him, Colin. Yeah, Playford is definitely closing on the Ducati. No, Playford is a guy who seems to have settled in and picked up the pace. We've seen some good laps from him. Yes. Look at this. He is working the back of Simpson hard, going up the inside of three. Will this work? Very very tight, but it did. All right, oh, he drifted man. wide. Wow. That is exactly where uh, Rennie Skaysbrook put it into the hay bales, I think, last year at this racetrack. Playford doing a wonderful job here, though, on the Ducati. And again, he looks to the inside, uh, albeit a little bit early, of course, on uh, on McKay. But nonetheless, it's obvious that Playford has uh, some more aggression in mind, Colin. Well, it's an announcer's dream, this race, because every time one guy does something exciting, someone else on a different bike does something even more exciting, and really still nothing to choose. And we look at this, the Ducati, trying the outside, and that looked pretty good. And McKay must be wondering, is there a lane he's missed on this racetrack? Holy cow, McKay with that fast company uh, Kawasaki. I don't think you can build a faster Kawasaki than that, but uh, still with all, we have a Ducati leading this race and a Ducati running in third spot, and that's a little historic. We're gonna take a quick break here from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, but we'll be right back on TSN. Here we are back at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We are working lap eight of 14 right now, and we have a runaway winner, uh, potential winner, I should say, with Elliot Vieira on the Ducati. And here's the battle for second spot, and it involves six riders, Colin. And I'm wondering what the pit boards say, because there's really nothing in it all the way back to Souza, who's been hanging out at the back of the lead group. Right now, he's seventh, but uh, everybody here has a serious shot Whoa. at the podium. And of course, most recently, Playford has moved up, and is, if anything, maybe breaching the gap between the group led by McKay, who's now fourth off the podium, our points leader, and Playford, who's looking for his best career result in his debut this year as a pro on the Ducati. And I don't know if you caught that, Frank. He just glanced at his dash coming yes. down the hill. That is a bad place to be looking as if something's bothering him. Oh, that, well, don't talk like that. Playford doing such a great job there, and he is in an ideal position right now. Look at them stacked up like cards coming out of a Las Vegas or something. Here they're on to the back straightaway now and Playford lost a bunch on that drive and he's got company alongside now. Yeah, Playford's oh no, he's up. out! So something happened and we uh, caught a touch of Playford looking around trying to understand and Good it's eye. so frustrating uh, you know, when you're when you're trying to ride all out and you've got so many things on your mind to optimize the performance of your bike as Simpson very important move there, mm -hmm. just got by McKay. Yeah, those two guys battling it for the Liquid Molly Pro Sport Bike National Championship. Uh, Simpson running in second spot to McKay in that championship, but right now he is running in front of McKay and he is trying to hunt down Francis Martin. Now, yesterday in the rain, both of these guys at times looked like they were doing what they needed to do, then Simpson fell, and then under pressure, no pressure, McKay fell and basically left the points exactly where they had been, and they're right back into that same battle as McKay looks up the inside of Simpson, didn't wow. work. McKay looking to the inside of Simpson, Simpson to look into the inside of Martin as the battle continues now down to the bottom of the hill. Now we'll take a run up into turn number three, Martin leading. Simpson looks to the inside, nothing to be had there, and he's not close enough to launch an attack. But someone who is close enough to launch an attack, who's doing an incredible job and just about picked off McKay is Lang. And it's funny he's with Lang, it's like you hit a switch and he turns into a classic Westerner wow. and he's not putting up and he tries some different lines. Thank you Holy. so much for Lang doing that right in the middle of my presentation on his behalf. What a beautiful, Good aggressive Lord. move. And he's now thinking about a podium as McKay's going, this is not the plan. He He's tasted the champagne now. Oh, yeah, here comes McKay now. He makes the pass. And Lang very smartly moves right in behind him, getting a little bit of a toe up the straightaway. Speaking of toes, look at Matt Simpson now as he has got a little bit of a toe from Francis Martin, and Simpson has moved into second spot. Beautiful move. Yeah, and I'm a little concerned about that because earlier I wouldn't have thought anyone could get by Martin that way. Now we're on board with Simpson on that Yamaha YZF-R6, and he is pulling out of the draft. He's going on the high side, passing Martin. Martin is, if anything, cheating a little bit to the right, and I am <laughs> concerned there's something wrong with Martin's bike because okay. it does not look as fast as it looked earlier in the race. Don't talk like that. It's certainly running strong now. It's keeping him in front of, uh, keeping him in front rather of the points leader, uh, David McKay. However, David McKay and Lang and Souza now are poised to uh, to make a move, and you got to feel bad about McKay. Here's a shot of Playford. Okay, so definitely something.
something going on on the left side of that bike. It could be a leaking cover or something to do with the foot peg or the shift linkage. With the Ducati, a lot of things are bolted in one group of pieces on the side of the engine there. So really disappointing for Playford after battling his way up to third. And the lap times here around McKay uh, and around Martin, Martin's faded back and he's actually opening up the gap here, which if anything is helping everyone in front of him, which is really just Simpson and of course our leader Vieira. Remember him, Frank? <laughs> oh yes, we haven't seen him in a while, but we do remember him. And we also remember uh, Marco Souza running back in sixth spot right now. He ran second in the very first lap of this race and uh, he has fallen back as far as uh, seventh in the, in, the, uh, in the running order, but now uh, definitely staying with the group. Now. In all of this, and we were watching right. Sousa trying Lang, but something's happened with Lang because he was right there and he's faded back again. To probably a little mistake that we missed because there's so much going on, but I'm still paying attention to Lang. But look at that, Martin is fading and now our championship yeah. contenders are gonna settle up with each other in this battle for second. And this is gonna be the ongoing story within a story as we look to complete this Liquid Molly race right here on TSN. Portions of the Liquimali Pro Sport Bike Championship are brought to you by Joe Rocket, Economy Lube and Tire, and Saron Canada. We're back at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the closing stages, Colin. This has been a barn burner. Beautiful sunny day, very, very windy here, but at least it's not raining like yesterday when these guys raced and it was really a very bad scene uh, at the front. Lots of action, lots of excitement, but both the riders were watching battling for the championship and battling for second were down yesterday as we go on board with Matt Simpson and David McKay's climbing all over the tail of that Yamaha, wants the points, does not want to give them up to Simpson. Where has uh, Martin got to? We were showing him in sixth spot now, he's had uh troubles obviously well I really thought Martin was capable of even leading this race early on and certainly looked very good for second based look on the this. top end performance and now we got to look at Lang and Lang. boy did he once again come out of nowhere look, look at, at this, this move three, three abreast going into turn number three. Oh, Matt Simpson just about got into a bit of a slide there McKay's thrown way off the racing line and Marco Souza the veteran rider so great to see him back in action again and he has definitely not lost a bit of speed we got to throw it out to Lang this is his first year on the Look at this, he wow. commits because these guys are being conservative. They're so focused on each other. There is a clear opening there, lots of empty track, and Lang goes as far inside as he can, but right here, Sim he's trying to swing out and catch the line. We've seen a lot of people tuck the front end there if you don't get back wide again to make the line. And the guy who, of course, is the most careful, typically of the bunch is McKay, and he's the one who winds up pushed wide. That was virtually close to disaster. Now Lang and Simpson up the back straight away, and Simpson got the better of that drive but guess who's getting the toe? It's McKay getting the toe now uh, from uh, third in this group. No, didn't happen. Matt Simpson maintains his position. John Lang uh, taking another stab now. Lang is the man to watch in this race now. And I think Lang is in that difficult position at Mosport on the back straight when you're on a fairly fast bike against the very fastest of the bikes. And Lang's Kawasaki isn't slow, but it is not showing Down the Down to legs. the inside goes Lang. No, not to be happening as Matt Simpson slams the door on him. And Lang is not afraid to change up the Comes lines. Again. Now he's trying that Zoke line up the inside of two. Is he going to make it worked. There he is. Oh, yeah. Wow. What a move. What a great shot on board from Simpson as he swings out wide. And uh, lots of pressure here. Somebody going slow in front. And I think that's Playford who's going Playford back out. Playford came back out again. Yeah, but uh, he wisely moved over. That was a very gentlemanly move uh, by Nathan Playford. And there is Francis Martin. He's out of the race, Colin. Yeah, and that's a shame. He really looked on for a podium. It's been quite a long time. Of course, he hasn't been racing with us. Definitely something mechanical happened with that very fast Suzuki that showed so well in the early going. Now Lang, who won yesterday in the rain, is showing he has a lot of dry pace in what is his sixth ever race in the series. Lang now onto the back straightaway, and I think he's got enough distance between himself, Simpson, and uh, McKay uh, that he may be able to break free from them. Oh, <laughs> make a liar out of me is McKay. There's uh, Simpson rather pulls up right alongside, and then McKay gets in the toe right in behind him. 
Up th- over the hills, sorry. And I think McKay made a mistake there. He didn't go under the way it might have worked. He decided to take the wide line. There's our leader, Vieira, with only a lap to go. But of course, our focus has not been on the runaway Ducati at the front. The battle for second, particularly given it contains the race for the championship, has been what we've been watching this whole race. And that battle for second has been superb. Well, two years in a row now, uh, uh, Elliot Vera has done this. And you're not supposed to be able to do this at uh, at Mosport, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You are not supposed supposed to be able to get a runaway win like this, especially in sport bike. And the only other person who's done it is Tremblay, and Tremblay is not in action today. He fell yesterday. He had a mechanical before the start of this race on the warm-up lap, and that has left it to this group of crazy people to put on the show, and they have certainly delivered. Well, the beauty of it is, and you pointed it out, that, uh, that Lang is running on a fast motorcycle, no question about it. Willie Vass has got his hands in that thing, but he's running against the fastest 600 sport bikes that we have on the circuit. We're talking about uh, Simpson and McKay now, and of course, he's losing out at, on that back straight. We've seen it two laps in a row now, but this is the last lap. And Simpson pulls pretty close. And of course, if he's in the right position in the slipstream, so far we've seen that both Simpson and McKay should have the legs on Lang. Now, everybody has to be tidy, as you like to say, Frank. Elbows, knees, heads down, everything yeah. soft air. There you go already. Simpson's blown by. Here comes oh, McKay. Wow. What a shot that Good gives Lord. you the idea of the violence of that air as we come off the back straight. So McKay has been holding back over the last few laps. He could have done that two laps ago. Checkered flag is out. Elliot Vieira has scored a national championship win in this, the Liquid Molly Pro Sport Bike Class, but who will be second? Who will be third? McKay to the inside of Simpson. No, can't get it done. Down to the finish line they go, right alongside, not quite, but there you have it. Simpson in second spot, McKay will take third, and John Lang, a very creditable fourth spot, but my hat's off to Marco Sousa. What a terrific race by that veteran. And still, we gotta mention Lang because uh, he has learned a lot, and of course, let's also mention someone who's learned a lot, and that's the guy who just won the first ever sport bike race for Ducati in Canada. Wow, that's history. History, Mr. Vieira. Well done, Elliot. Race six is complete, Colin. Let's have a f- look at the uh, final finishing order. So we got to mention Simpson edges McKay in the battle of the championship contenders, laying in the thick of it, moving well up the standings. Souza, brilliant ride. He was in it the whole way. Michelle once again shows well in his rookie season. There we see the rest of the top 10. Got to mention Playford with the DNF as well as Martin, Connor Campbell, and also uh, Tremblay, our pole sitter. And let's go to Sarah in the pits. All right, Elliot Vieira, winner of race six in the Liquid Molly Pro Sport Bike Championship. How does it feel? Oh man, it's amazing. Uh, we had a little rough year. We were having the, so we had a crash in uh, Shannonville first, and then Grand Bend. We started to pick up a pace, and then we couldn't make it out to Nova Scotia. But you know, it feels good to be on top of the box. I love this track. I love the crowd. I love everyone here. You know, so. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened at the end there? Yeah, we finished the crowd, crossed the finish line, and then I just felt the bike cutting out, and I, yeah, I ran out of gas. <laughs> so we put exactly the right amount, but you know, we should put in more next time. Congratulations. Thank you. Colin, let's have a look at our point standings after race six. Simpson catches up, but not by much. McKay led a lap, so that always makes a difference. Got to talk about Lang, and he, if he had not fallen at our Shannonville opener in the rain, would be in the thick of the championship chase. This is going to be a barn burner as the season continues. There's our podium as Elliot Vieira is celebrating Ducati's very first sport bike win here in Canada. On behalf of the entire CSBK crew, thanks for being with us. See you next time.